Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Welcome to Morning Mana with Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord. What a morning. Yes, we are enjoying this month of October. This is the day that the Lord has made and surely we are going to be glad and rejoice in it. Before we start, we just want to thank God for who we are in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature and all things are passed away and behold, all has become new. Yes, before we talk about the devices of the enemy, I want you to confirm and I want you to affirm who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes, we know we live in Christ Jesus. We are what we are by what Christ has made us. Oh, glory to Jesus. We are rude, not of the world. We are rude of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that, you know, he, has, he was made sin for our sake. He was made sin so that we can be righteous of God. And now you and me, we are the righteous of God through Christ Jesus and we thank God for him for that. We are redeemed from sickness. We are redeemed from disease. We are redeemed from all the case of laws of the law according to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. So we thank God because what we are, what has made us is because of the redemption he has given us on the cross of Calvary. We are the head and not the tail. Because in him we live, we move, and we have got our being. And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ. Yes, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Yes, we are part of the church and generation of God. Yes, you are so, as we walk every day, we must know that we are unique. We are particular. We are peculiar. And we are special people to God. Father, thank you for this morning. As your word is coming to you, to us this morning. Father, Father, thank you, Lord, for we know who he has made us to be in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, for the ability to be aware and to walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, good morning, saints. I said the devices of the enemy. The Bible tells us, for we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. As believers, it is good for us to know that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Hallelujah. If there is a zoo and a lion is let out and you just walk around and if you don't know that there's an lion up out there, it can devour you. But I know as a believer, you know who you are in Christ Jesus. We are just reminding each other so that we cannot be devoured by the tricks of the enemy. We want to go to the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. It says, Lest Satan should get an advantage over us. Lest Satan should take an advantage over us. Hallelujah. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So I want you to know and to understand that we are not ignorant of his devices. Least he take advantage over us. In your life, we have to know. If we don't know his devices, he will take advantage over us. If we don't know his devices, he will take advantage over us. If we don't know his devices, he will become, we will become a, a, a meat to our, to the devourer. Oh, glory to Jesus. So it is important for us to know all the time that we are, we are, we are, we are the victorious in Christ Jesus. And we must be aware of whatever he wants to come against us. I also want us to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 26. The Bible says, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who have taken them captive, captive by him at his will. You know, if we know who the enemy is and who our enemy is, we know we are not going to surrender. We are not going to give in to the devices of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. In this month, I see you recovering from the devices of the enemy. I see you recovering from the snare of the enemy. If something is a device or a snare, it's something which comes hidden. It's something which comes despised. You know, I'm talking about the strategies of the enemy. But in your life, I want to pray this morning that the strategies of the enemy are not going to conquer you. If we go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, we read it yesterday. It says, put on the whole armor of God 
you know, that you may be able to stand against the wells of the enemy. We're talking about the devices. We are talking about the ways of the enemy. There is an armor we should put on. There is a way we must behave as believers for our victory to be certain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. If it talks about the wells of the enemy, it talks about the tactics. It talks about the schemes. It talks about the strategies of the enemy. So the enemy whom we are fighting has got tactics, has got strategies. He might not come as plain as you think. He can come hidden. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. If it's a strategy, it's a carefully arranged plan. You know, it's a you know, it's an out, it's an outwit. It's planned carefully to destroy you. In your life, you might be going through lots of things. That's why I say, I will say, God must give us a spirit of discernment because what you're facing might be a plan. It's a long time plan for the enemy to destroy you. You know, the primary deception, the enemy, I mean, the primary true, the enemy use is deception. Deception is one of his strategies and one of his tactics. One of his strategies, deception in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So every time as we pray, we always have to pray and say, God, let my spiritual light, eyes be illuminated. Let there be light. Let there be illumination in my eyes so that the strategies of the enemies won't destroy me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The enemy who come and pose as an angel of light. The enemy who come with strategies, with these vices, with, this, with schemes to destroy us. But today, I want us to be aware of all the schemes of the enemy. If we go to Luke chapter 23, verse, verse 31. Luke chapter 23, verse 31. The Bible tells us, chapter 22, verse 31. The Bible says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, yes, behold, Satan has desired to have you, and he has sifted you like wheat. Simon, Simon, the enemy, Satan, has desired to have you. He has sifted you like wheat. You know, what, what was the word of God saying? The, the enemy would desire to have us, who will sift to us. We will bring things on our way. But I want to, to tell you this morning, be vigilant. Be alert, no matter how he comes, no matter what he uses, no matter what is his strategies, no matter what his ways, you are more than conquerors. You are not going to be defeated. You are not going to fall into the devices of the enemy. You are not going to be defeated by the trickery of the enemy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to Jesus. The Bible tells us he is like a rolling lion looking for him he can devour. But you are not one of the people he's going to devour. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We read it yesterday. He says, be sober, be vigilant. Hallelujah. Be sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary, the devil, like a rolling lion, walks about seeking whom you may devour. He's walking around causing accidents, family marital breakdown, diseases, weaknesses, strategies. It is his it is his resume that he destroys. The Bible tells us in John 10, 10 and says, The thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. But the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I, can, I came that I may, they might have life and have it more abundantly. So as believers, we must know that is the devil who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But God wants us to have life. Glory to Jesus. I'm still talking about the devices of the enemy, the schemes of the enemies, the strategy of the enemy to destroy, to destroy, to disembark, to make you not successful. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15. Ezekiel 28, verse 15. The Bible says, Thou wast perfect in the way from the day thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. He's talking about Lucifer. He was perfect. Hallelujah. You know, till iniquity came in him. What am I saying? Sometimes when the enemy comes, he doesn't come in as ugly as we think. He come in deception. He come in looking good. Not all evil looks bad. When evil come, 
It might think, no, I'm doing well. It might come in things that I'm enjoying better. It's better to be out of this marriage so that I can be okay. It will be looking good. It's better if I steal money from the company so that all my troubles might go. It will be looking good, but that's not what God wants you to do. You know, it might look good. It might look better, but it's not what God wants you to do. Today, what I want to, to tell you, believers and beloved, that, you know, the deception of the enemy mustn't control us, mustn't rule us. I want us to go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know that the blasphemy of, of them which say they are Jewish and not, but they are in the synagogue of Satan. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. So he has his own synagogue. They says they are in the synagogue of Satan. But you know what? I'm speaking to you as a believer. You don't belong to the synagogue of Satan. Christ lives in you. You are born again. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Satan has his own gospel. He's the has got what he preaches to us. That's why he says, yeah, the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue of Satan. You know, he has got all his own gospel. If you are not careful, deception will come your way and you miss the truth. Hallelujah. You know, a diverted truth becomes false. Hallelujah. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 to 9. The Bible says, I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. The enemy uses deception of another gospel, a contrary gospel. Do you, what you believe, it may sound good, it may sound proper, but is it the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? I read in Revelation, the synagogue of Satan has got a synagogue. In the synagogue, they are teaching. And he is saying, I marvel that you also removed from that which you have called you the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other, you know, glory to Jesus. What am I saying? There are people who can speak other gospel, other things you are not in the word of God, perverting the word of Christ. We just have to pray for our pastors, pray for our leaders, our apostles, so that they can preach the right gospel. Why am I saying this? There are things the devil uses to deceive us, you know, which can look like the gospel. Not all prayers are, go, are, from, um, are going to God. You know, the Bible tells us you have to pray all the all ways. And there are lots of people who pray all ways. But what are they praying? Who are they praying to? Another gospel. God tells us that healing is our portion, but there are all sorts of things which are done for people to have healing, which is another gospel, not the gospel of Christ. When you're talking about the gospel of Christ, people are healed in the name of Jesus. But what does the other gospel say? It will be contrary to the word of God. Today, if you're under the sound of my voice, we want so that the deception of the enemy might not take us. The Bible says Christ took all our sins, all our infirmities. But another gospel say, come pay, come with offering to the prophet, to the man of God, so that your sins can be, be forgiven. But that's another gospel. The Bible tells us that the highest of offering was the offering of Christ Jesus, which was done on the cross of Calvary. Watch what you listen. Watch what you believe. There are believers who still believe or who believe that, you know, their lives will never improve. Their lives will ever be the same. They are defeated because of people who want to curse them. My Bible tells me that cursed is the man who hangeth on a tree. There is no other gospel which is better than the gospel of Christ. I might be in tribulation and temptation, but the devil mustn't cheat me twice. That whatever I'm facing cannot be conquered by Christ Jesus. Because the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. If you go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it tells us, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith, giving haste to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Hmm? Departing from the truth, giving themselves to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
there are doctrines which are inspired by the devil. It can be it can be a large crowd, it can be a lot of people, it can be somebody you love, a prophet you love, a pastor you love, but check what they are doing. Is it still according to the word of God? So we have to say, Lord, help us so that our eyes can be opened, so that we may not drawn away from you from the deception of the enemy. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from 20 to 21 says, him, But I say that the things which are the gentle sacrifice, they sacrifice to devil and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with the devil. Ye cannot drink the same cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil. You cannot partake of the table, the Lord's table. What am I saying this morning? We have to be careful out there. The devil is there to deceit in the form, to deceive in the form of religion, in the form of being a believer. But today, if you're under the sound of my voice, I want to help you. May God help us. That deception won't be our portion. We won't partake in the deception, deceit of the enemy. We are going to be vigilant. We are going to be alert that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will write a standard in our mind so that it doesn't deceive us, so that it mustn't take away from the truth. The Bible tells us of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says he's the way, the truth, and the light. So his illumination, his light. Yes, so we have to make sure that, you know, light has to prevail on our way. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. How does the devil deceive us? You know, he deceives us through his lies. He's the father of lies. He deceives us through his lies. Hmm? And he wants to bind the truth. He wants to possess the truth. He wants to turn the truth. Yes, God wants you married. But remember, 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 you're now 40, you're 35, you're 50. Who's going to marry you? Why don't you just do this? Hmm? Remember, you know, remember, God wants you rich. But the riches are not coming. Why don't you just go get a muti and get the riches? Anyway, the inyanga was created by God. You know what? The devil wants to tell you, possess the truth and give you things of this world and keep you in deception. If you are under the sound of my voice, I pray that deception will not be your portion. Deception will not come your way. Let's go to John chapter 8, verse 44. The Bible tells us, Ye are of your father the devil, and the last of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks he speaks lies he speaks of his own He's, he is a liar and the father of lies what am i saying in life you have to be careful the devil is rolling speaking lies whispering lies you are sick you tell me hey hey you never you get real imagine you are dying soon you know, you think your father died at 40. You're not going to get 40. Lies of the devil. As a believer, we mustn't be deceived by the enemy. Know his voice and rebuke it. Know that all, not all the voices speaking in your mind are from God. Rebuke those voices. Go kill yourself. You're useless. He attacks your mind. As long as it's not from God, rebuke it. Philippians tells us, whatsoever thing is lovely, Whatever thing is true, whatever thing is of a good report, think of these things. Whenever which is contrary comes in your mind, note it and fight it. It's the devil. He's looking for a foothold to enter and destroy your life. The enemy will lie to you. You're not going to rise from that sick bed. Rebuke him. You're going to arrive. You're going to be restored. If God restored Job, he's going to restore you in Christ Jesus. The enemy will say, your children are going to die. You're going to be ashamed. Look, you don't have resources. The same God who supplied, who, who supplied the widow woman is going to send a miracle to you and supply hookah. The enemy will say, you're barren. You're not going to be anything. The same God who gave Sarah a child in an old age. The same God who gave Elizabeth a child. The same God who miraculously gave, you know, you know, you know Mary a child is going to work on your behalf. The same God. The same God is well able, but I want to encourage you. The devil will come and bring deception. You will make you want to doubt. He wants to water you down. He will whisper you, look, your salary, you're not going to make it. You're not going to do well. You're not going to be well in your life. 
But I speak to you this morning that, you know, the deception of the enemy must endure you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a liar and the father of it. When he whispers to you, when he says things to you, just tell him you are a liar and the father of it. David conquered, you know, conquered, you know, Goliath. Goliath was so big, but he believed in this same God. I don't know what mountain we are facing. We have to believe that this God is well able and super able to do it. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. It says, but remember, the devil was there in the beginning. Huh? He was there in the garden. Just after creation, he popped in. And in the New Testament, when the Lord Jesus Christ was sent, he popped in, trying to deceive the Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to unto God, the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ conquered him even to the cross. Hallelujah. He says, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in this day thou shalt eat, thou shalt surely die. That was what God has said to Eve. But when the enemy came, he said, what was the opposite of what God had said? In your life, God will refute the truth to you. But in your mind, the devil can come with a deception to want to destroy you. You know, to destroy you. But this morning, I want to encourage you in every situation you are facing, whatever you are facing, hold on to the truth of God. So I'm saying, number one, Satan lies through binding the truth, through making the truth bad, through making the truth, through perversing the truth, through just putting a little lie in the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan will also deceive you through suggestions in your mind. He's a very good suggester. I read somewhere where it says you can go for days, maybe three or so days without water, drinking water. You know, you can go maybe for some minutes without oxygen coming to your brain, but you can't pass a minute without thinking. So because you know that your thoughts are very important and your thoughts pattern, they control the center of your life. What does he does do? He deceives in our minds. So Satan put evil suggestions in our mind. Today, I want you to know that you know what in your mind, control your mind, guard your mind so that he cannot control your mind. If you go to John chapter 13, verse 2, the Bible says, and supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, you know, Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. The devil put in his heart, in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray. The devil put in his heart. So the devil bring suggestion in our hearts today. Let us not just take all suggestions. When suggestions come our way, ideas come our way we have to check them are they according to the word of god we go to the book of acts you know chapter 5 verse 3 it says but peter said to ananias why has Satan filled thy heart you know to lie to the holy ghost and keep and keep back the price your heart the devil felt judas iscariot's heart the devil filled ananias heart the Bible tells us, you know, in the book of, of James, that, you know, when temptation, when, you know, when thoughts are fully grown, they become temptation. And those temptations, when we heal it for with them, we sin. What am I saying? You know, there are things which comes in our hearts. We mustn't just execute. We have to fight in the inward man. We have to fight. We have to recognize that he deceives us. He will give us suggestion. And the suggestion from God. Are the ideas from God? Yes, they can relieve the pain. Yes, they might think you are feeling better. But is it from God? From today, I want us to work circumstantly, walk carefully, checking what you know we are thinking. The other thing the devil uses to deceive us is to promote unforgiveness in our hearts, unforgiving spirit, and unforgiving spirit, which will destroy us, which will destroy the relationship with God, which will destroy the effectiveness in our relationship with God, forgiveness. I pray to some, to, I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice, forgive those who have wronged you, even before they forgive, you forgive them. I mean, even before they, they come to ask for forgiveness. Forgive, learn the art of forgiveness. It's not easy, we've all been proved, but for us to go to the next level, we have to choose to forgive. 
we have to choose to forgive is good for us. If we go to James chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, it says, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. The wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. If you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, bitterness, envy, and strife in our hearts.